How you doing? This is Jim Fisher. Welcome to The Third Way. Not left, not right. America's Third Way, Libertarianism. Today I wanted to talk to you about Ron Paul. I don't support any politician out there, Republican, Democrat. They're all the same to me. They're all big government progressives. Bush, Reagan, uh, Clinton, uh, Obama. They're, real, they're all the same to me, you know. Every... Everybody that supported uh, Obama and said Bush was a warmonger uh, all of a sudden went away uh, when it came to protesting the war, and Obama's done nothing but get us in more wars. Um, you know, they're all the same to me. Uh, I hate politicians. To me, the political entrepreneur, by definition, is a um, is really kind of a fiendish, uh, fiendish trade to, uh, to aspire to get into, to want power, and... Uh, political prowess, I guess, is, is the term. Um, somebody that, that wants that, to me, is, uh, I really have no use for that. But the one exception, the one uh, extreme abnormality in politics today is Ron Paul. Um, you know, a little history about Ron Paul. He, he went to uh, Gettysburg College, got his degree. Then he went to Duke University of Medicine, got his doctorate in, uh, in medicine. And um, he was an obstetrician. He was actually a flight surgeon from 1963 to 1968 in the United States Air Force. Um, and then after that, in 68, he uh, got out and he started his own practice. And uh, his kind of claim to fame in the medical world is he's, he's delivered over 4,000 babies. Uh, Ron Paul is a man of integrity. Uh, it's he. To me, he's he's today's Thomas Jefferson. He's he is a libertarian. Um, he runs as a Republican, obviously, but he's not a uh, establishment or GOP uh, Republican. Uh, he's extremely well educated. Um, even though he's a doctor, he is extremely educated in in economics, and um, he subscribes to the Austrian theory, or well, the Austrian business cycle theory. Uh, he is a member of the Mises Institute, an honorary member of the Mises Institute, um, which is a libertarian uh, think tank slash educational foundation uh, that promotes liberty. And that's what Ron Paul wants, is liberty. He is a libertarian. Um, he's written many books. He's written a book called Liberty Defined. He's written a book called End the Fed. He's written a book called The Case for Gold. Um, when it comes to gold, he that, that was kind of his de, his defining moment that got him into politics was that uh, fretful day, August fifteenth, nineteen seventy one, when Nixon took us off the gold standard. That kind of got Ron Paul fired up, and he, he, he said, uh, you know, now we've eliminated real money, and now all we're going to have is political money. Um, the Fed is the root cause of the mess that we're in right now. It's the cause of the housing bubble. It was the cause of the dot-com bubble. And every bubble throughout history and every uh, d depression since 1913 was caused by the Fed. Ron Paul is leading the fight against the Fed. He wants the Fed uh, audited. He wants the Fed eliminated, but one step at a time. Uh, he's the only politician out there going after the Fed. Most politicians don't even understand that the Fed printing money ca is what causes inflation. You know, we have three, four, five, six, seven, eight percent. This year, it's been three percent a month about uh, inflation. Inflation is not a natural part of the economy. We've had, we see it, we know it as long as we've been alive. Um, and I think a lot of us just assume inflation is just a natural uh, occurrence in the free market. It is not. The natural uh, occurrence of the free market is to actually have slight deflation over time. Things gradually get cheaper uh, in a free market economy. Um, but because of the Fed, we have inflation. So he, Ron Paul actually enacted resol, uh, legislation to have Congress have their pay reduced by the rate of inflation to try to incentivize them to go after the Fed. Um, of course, it didn't go through, but, uh, but he, he did uh, bring out that legislation. He's brought out uh, legislation for term limits multiple times. Um, you know, all politicians talk about it. We all know term limits are needed because of the fiasco of having career politicians. Uh, Ron Paul is not a career politician. He still delivers, not still now, but for throughout his 22-year career, 22 year career, he continued to deliver babies on uh, Mondays and Saturdays. Um, you know, 
he, he has the experience of working in the uh, private sector. Um, he's run his own practice. Um, he, he really is a man of, of integrity. He's never taken a political junket. Uh, he does not accept the very lucrative congressional uh, retirement program that they all get, which is uh, much more than Social Security and anything you and I are going to see from the government. Um, he does not accept that. Um, so he is he's a man of integrity. He's a, a kind of a phenom in the political world in that, you know, he actually represents liberty. That's not something that politicians do. Politicians all inflate the size of government, whether it's Republican or Democrat. They all inflate government. They all want to teeter-totter and play around with every aspect of your life, uh, regulating this and regulating that. Um, that's Ron Paul is kind of the rarity. You know, he's kind of known as the, the, the crazy guy in politics, and that's because he supports liberty, and that's not the norm. That, that's, that is revolutionary today, is to be a supporter of liberty. liberty. And that's kind of what Ron Paul is known as. Um, you know, Keith Poole of the University of Georgia, a social scientist, did a study of voting records. Uh, had nothing to do with Ron Paul. But he, through that study, he found that of all um, Republicans, Ron Paul had the most conservative voting record of anybody since uh, 1937. So uh, he, he votes uh, true conservative as a true conservative, not today's um, we want to control your, the social aspects of your life conservative, as an actual conservative, meaning conserving the state of the Constitution. And Ron, Ron Paul votes that way every time. He votes for liberty every time. Uh, he's had many votes where it's been one or two against the rest of Congress. Um, you know, they'll, they'll enact some new bill that, that uh, you know, takes away another small piece of liberty. And that's his benchmark for measuring whether he votes for a bill or not. Does it promote liberty or does it take away liberty? Um, he is a true Thomas Jefferson. Uh, that's the only way I can say it. He's very un and un very unusual uh, phenomenon in politics. That guy like him only comes around probably once a century. And, um, you know, this, this whole thing about he's not electable, you know, he ran in, in 1988, got like 2% of the vote, ran in, in, uh, 19, in 2008, only got a couple percent. Um, something's different now, though. We're going through a great awakening. In those two elections, you didn't see all these articles about, hey, Ron Paul's not electable, Ron Paul's not electable, Ron Paul's not electable. You didn't see those articles being written. Now they're being written all over the place. He has them running scared. And what are you going to do with your vote? You're throwing it away anyway. You're going to you're going to vote for Obama. You're going to vote for Romney, Perry, a bunch of you know big government tyrants. Uh, you know, a couple years ago, Romney was in the 2007 presidential debate telling us how his um, health care model for Massachusetts should be used for the whole country, and now we hear he is flip flopping, telling us no, only the states have the right to do that. You know. Those guys will tell you anything you want to hear. He departed himself from the Tea Party, Romney did, but all of a sudden now he's trying to you know, smooth it over with the Tea Party. Ron Paul is known as the intellectual father of the Tea Party. He was there when it, when it started. He helped get it going. You know, that's who Ron Paul is. Not a, hey, look, there's a bunch of voters over there. Maybe I should see if, uh, if I agree with their theology. Ron Paul is a man of integrity. You, he cannot be swayed, he cannot be bought, uh, like every single other politician in Congress. And uh, we can't miss this opportunity to put this man um, in the White House. Uh, he's going to retire after this if he, if he doesn't get elected. Um, and to me personally, I, I think this can be done. I think we can do this. Uh, you know, I think the rest of the country knows all they're doing is throwing away their vote anyway, and they're going to be happy. To, to take the risk of, of voting for somebody that they're not sure if they can win or not. You know, a few years ago, people weren't willing to waste their vote. I think today, uh, people know they're wasting it anyway. So that's enough for, for now. Uh, Jim Fisher signing off for the third way. Not left, not right. America's third way, libertarianism.